Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and I should be doing a different fix-it video but I can't help it. These Xbox controllers are just so addictive. So let's have a, a look in here. I can see a white one. I can see a white one. Let's do this one here. What does this say? Battery loose. Oh, hold on. Right, okay. It says battery loose, but the analog stick is loose. So again, if you watch any of my other videos on this series so far, you would know that so far, out of the six of them, I've been sold two complete and utter junk ones, where basically every single part of them, Frankenstein controllers, every part of them have just been taken from broken... Uh, everyone uh, just been taken from broken controllers. So now, let's see here. That's clicking, let's just give a quick check. That all seems to be okay, so the analog stick is definitely not working. In fact, it feels like there's nothing there, so I reckon that's probably gonna be missing. Also, this is loose here. It says battery loose, but everything looks all right there. So let's get some batteries, plug it in, and see what's happening. Good news is I'm definitely moving up in the world because we now have an Xbox One S controller, the one with the 3.5 millimeter jack, so this one will have Bluetooth as well. See what happens. Ah, I left my second hand there from the uh, Pulse watch I was trying to fix. Let's see if it turns on. Yes, it does. That's good news. Hit the sync button. Let's try that again. Excellent. But then it turns off again straight away, so that's not good, is it? Hmm, okay. So, initial faults look like, for some reason it's turned itself off, and there's no analog stick. Hmm. Right, let's connect it up to the computer and see what's happening. Right, okay, let's get the USB cable. Plug it into here. Plug it in, see if we've got the, see if the USB port's working all right. Okay, it's vibrated there. Excellent, it's being recognized. Well, that's good. That's really, really good. So now let's uh, go to new, start testing. Let's see what's happening here. Hopefully you can see that all right. So that works. Oh look, the analog stick is there. It's not doing anything, but it is, look, when I go over that way, it is slightly registering, and when I click in, it registers. Yes, yes, triggers work. Up, down, left, right. Well, that's pretty good. So far out of all of them, this seems to be the most promising. Now, uh, I wonder, do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get my wireless stick to see if it will connect up wirelessly because I'm a bit worried why it shuts off here. Okay, so let's unplug this. Plug this one in. I think it's gonna have to update the drivers or download the drivers. I don't think this has ever been plugged in here before. See if it syncs up. Yeah. Oh, it did for a second, then it's gone out. So that is the problem with this one. So it looks like it's the analog stick, but there's something much more major. So let's try that again. So watch this. Turn it on, hit the sync button. Watch this light here. Pairs up and then goes straight off. So, yet again, I'm not going to whinge in this video, but yet again, this is not what it claims it to be. Oh, here we go. No, it's synced up there, but it goes off. So, again, it's not claiming what it is. It's just a load of rubbish put together. The fact that it's not syncing up should be the fault, not the fact that it says battery loose and there's a problem here as well. So that is the problem. It's not going to work as a wireless controller. Okay, but again, an interesting fault because I haven't come across this before. So, th that's the good thing about this series of videos. On my part two, I was really annoyed. Apologies for calling the seller what I called him. Uh, that was a bit, you know, schoolboyish of me. It's just that I was really annoyed. But the thing is, 
it makes for more interesting videos and as well as that you learn a lot more. So right now, yeah, it would be nice if I could have a video that was 20 minutes long where I could just fix this. That would be a re real fault. But at least now, if, I probably can't, but if I can get it working we might find out why it's losing sync and power and we might find out why the analog stick's not working. Well, the analog stick's probably just gonna to need to be replaced, but this one here will definitely be interesting, won't it? It's just from my point of view, it means like you see a video that's an hour, maybe an hour and a half long, but to get an hour and a half video, remember I really do try to condense these videos. I know it doesn't seem like it, that's why there's so much fast forwarding but there could well be five or six hours of footage in it and then obviously that's near enough a day's work and then you see you have to edit that and to edit five or six hours of video normally takes five or six hours so it's kind of a couple of days work for a video that might get maybe I don't know like 30 maybe 40,000 views unlikely to ever reach over a hundred thousand views unfortunately it doesn't pay but still you know, that is the, the nature the nature of the beast. Right, let's uh, put this to one side, take this apart and see if we can find out what's happening. Right, okay, let's do this. Screw missing here, that's why it's loose. That shouldn't be a problem though. And a screw missing down here. Yeah, so both the bottom screws are missing. Again, battery cover missing here, so obviously it's been opened before. More than just the screws being missing down here, obviously it has been taken apart. This is, no, it's sad, but it's so excited for me to see what's on the inside. If these were all perfect controllers, it wouldn't be exciting. But for me, it's like a, it's kind of like a murder mystery, trying to find out what the seller's done. So on my last one in part two, the controller was a it was a Frankenstein controller made up of different controllers. So the trigger, the, the bumper buttons didn't fit the actual controller at all. Right, so this is quite a bit different. Let's take this off here. Let's see what's happening with the analog stick. Oh okay, with the analog stick it looks like just the middle post is broken. So I wonder now, still, oh, that's come straight out. So the screws are missing here as well. Let me undo that little Wi-Fi cable, the wireless cable thing, or the thing that joins the two boards. We've got a headphone jack here. Good on these because these ones are nice and easy to replace. I've actually done a video on that. So we have to find out now whether this syncing issue is the backboard or the front board. And then I can go from there. Oh, hold on a minute, look. That, should that just be soldered like that? And there's a nice hair there as well. Should that be soldered like that, or would it be a proper connector? Has that just been soldered on? Was that done in the factory? Actually, that looks pretty good. Maybe that was done. Maybe that is professional. I wonder why they didn't just have a, a clip on on both sides. Mind you, I suppose it doesn't need to be, does it? That can just be well, uh, soldered on there. It only needs to clip on one side to make it removable. Okay, uh Analog stick should be okay to replace. I'm wondering whether, because I've got a whole box of spares and some of them will have stick drift on them, and I'm wondering whether it'd be possible to actually just change the insert on here rather than having to change the whole analog stick, or is that a bit silly? Is that gonna take ages to do? Because all I need to do is change over this gray bit in the middle. I think it might be quite interesting to try and do that. Maybe we should try and do that first of all. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to unsolder all these wires here and then it will free me up room because I'm definitely going to have to be working on one if not two off the boards. First of all I'm just going to undo these screws here and take that other board out. Now what would be nice is if all the faults were on this board here because on the first two controllers there was faults on both the boards but because of that if I was to take a, a bet, I would say that the sinking issue is to do with this board here. Because I think what the seller's done is put two junk boards in each controller. So uh, it would be interesting, interesting to see if this has two junk boards as well. See if anything's written on them. No, 
I'm just going to have a quick visual check just with my eyes just to see if I can see anything corroded or hanging off or anything like that. Again, it's definitely been worked on because these solder joints here on the wires are not good. So obviously this, has, this board has been off and inspected. I'm just going to check out this one now. Visually, visually they look okay. Let me get my soldering kit out. I'm just going to unsolder these. Okay, just cleared up a little bit of room now. So, what I'm going to do is, let's dismantle this analogue stick here and see if there's a way that we can just swap the insert. Remember, it doesn't matter if I break it because it needs replacing anyway. But I just want to see if there is a way that we can do this. Okay, so no matter what, we're going to have to do some, we're going to have to unsolder it, aren't we? Yeah, definitely, no matter what, we have to unsolder it because it's in this metal case and the metal case is all soldered down the bottom here. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. No, 13, 14. So there's 14 points to unsolder. I'm just going to get my solder sucker. Right, my iron is set to 400 degrees C Celsius. off. Let's see how easy this thing comes apart. Okay, so they pop off lovely and easy. Now they should be the same on both of them. So that's for the up, down, left and right, or the X and Y axes. So I want to see if there's a way that I can get this grey thing out. So I think we need to lift up these bits here. Oh, I see, okay. So we have to lift up these little tabs and drop the gray thing. You see there's four tabs here in the corners. Now these are not expensive. I think you can get them for a couple of pounds each or I think you can get the proper ones. I'm pretty sure I bought the proper ones. I can't remember the name. Is it Alp or something? I don't know, but I definitely bought two of the proper ones. So if this doesn't work, it's not a problem. But even the proper ones, I think they were, th I think they were about 3.99 each, so four UK pounds. And if you're wondering, if you haven't seen the first two, if you're wondering how much I paid for these controllers, it's working out as 11 pounds 66p per controller. Right, so I just broke the little foot off there. Okay, that's off. Now this should come out. There we go. Right, so this is the button press, the thing that makes it click in when you press the button. And here we have the rest of it. So, if I use my tweezers, if, I, if I'm careful, I should be able to separate that grey thing. We have to take this whole middle section out of the, the next one, I think. Yeah, that's in there quite quite well. Okay, let's see if I've got any broken up analog sticks. Right, okay, I found one. So this is gonna be one that had stick drift. So this is in the, this is in my big box. I basically bought a massive box of spares for like 15 pound, but a lot of them is, is gonna be all sort of broken up stuff. But uh, yeah, what I'm thinking now is just take this one apart and take the gray thing out. Because when I initially plugged in this controller, it didn't look like it had stick drift. I didn't test it thoroughly, but when I, uh, the stick seemed to be in the middle, didn't it? Alps, there you go, I thought it was called Alps. Okay, so let's swap this over. See if it goes back together or not. Should have cleaned up all these bits of solder beforehand.
So it's this bit here that does the button press. You know when you click in, this thing goes down and hits this button here. So again, if the button press didn't work, it'd be something that'd be quite easy to change without changing out the, uh, the whole analog stick. But I know this is kind of pointless because the analog sticks are really cheap anyway. Right now, I broke the bottom bit, didn't I? So I might as well use the bottom bit from here. Okay, it's clicking in and stuff. Let's try to bend those tabs back over. Right, okay, that's, uh, that's on. So if I pop these on now, it should. Because this, this is the thing that actually measures the inputs. So basically there's uh, a carbon track in there. So uh, a potentiometer. That's right, isn't it? Because there's three contacts. Uh, so it measures basically resistance. So if you go across, I think the middle one is the... It's like a wiper or something. So you go from the middle one to this one. Can't remember now. I did, I did this before and I can't remember. But either way, depending on where it is on the track, it will depend, it, the resistance will change. So let's say if we've got a wire from here and then a wire to here, then if the wiper, the, the middle bit, the prong in the middle is nearer this side, the resistance will be different on this side than when the wiper is over this side, then the resistance will be different here than there. I hope that makes sense. So that's how this knows where you've got the trigger. I'll just solder this back on. I'm just going to have a little look underneath the uh, underneath it, and it all looks fine. So I don't need to take that off for any reason. It all looks good there. Keep all these in case I need spares. Oh well, there you go. That's the inside bit there. Can you see here? They're the two. They're the the, the two tracks, top and bottom, and this is like the wiper that moves around in it. So I'll keep all these because you never know, this might come in handy for something else in the future. Like for example, if that clicky button went, I haven't tested it, but that would probably be okay to use. Okay, that went on really, really smoothly, so hopefully now that will be, that will be okay. Actually, I just need to fill up a bit more there. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see if I can find a board in my box of spares. Again, I don't know if they're faulty or not, but I'm going to put them together and see if I get a different outcome when I connect them up to the, the PC. So uh, it might take a while, so I'm not going to film this bit. I'll just film it when I found the correct board. Right, OK, so my prediction had come true, which I knew was always going to be the case. Now. I'm not going to keep bad mouth in the cellar, but yet again, 240 boards. So this is the original board that he's given me, and I'm now using the backboard that he's given me. But in my box of spares, I've also got a backboard here, which I no longer need, and the front board from my spares. And when I use the front board from my spares and his backboard, it's now working. Now remember, we've just fixed the backboard by changing the analog stick, but I now need to fault find this front board. Good thing is, I'm happier about fault finding this front board because look, there's not a huge amount on it. I haven't got a deal with these massive chips here. Well, where are the chips? Maybe they're underneath here. Doesn't seem to be as many chips on this newer style as the older style. Maybe they're under here. I would say that's the wireless card again though. Anyway, I'm waffling. So basically, it does appear to be working. So let me go to game controller and let's see if... Uh, if it's all working as it should be. Right, so we're connected wirelessly. No drift on the analog sticks because they're in the middle. Perfect. And this was the faulty one, wasn't it? Yeah, that's all going to 100%, you can see on the travel. 100, 100, 100. Excellent, so that repair looks like it was successful. Let's just check everything else. 
click in and oops click in excellent just check this one yeah perfect right so right now it's a working controller so we have to fault find the front board so I can get rid of this and I can now compare my front board from my box of spares with the seller's faulty front board okay so we have the good board and the bad board I've put a little sticker on here so I know so I don't get mixed up now what I'm going to do to begin with is I'm just going to go across to capacitors and see if any of them have shorted. So I've got my meter set to continuity, so when the leads hit together, they beep. So I'm going to go across from here to the different ones. So I'm going to use this as my ground, and then I'm just going to go across the different caps. Right, none of them are shorted on that side. Let me try this side. Right, well, that's unfortunate. So nothing, uh, none of the capacitors have shorted. So it might well be one of these little chips or something. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go across both of these and see. So I'm going to go across each pin and just to see if the grounds are coming up in the same places here in case that one of these has uh, gone faulty internally. The third pin along is a ground. Right, well as far as the grounds are concerned, they're all they're all exactly the same. Now I'm not saying that that is the only the only thing to test for because obviously there's going to be paths going in here uh, and I'm only purely testing for uh, for grounds right what else now I suppose I could see if there's any difference between these things right they seem to be short in everywhere Check this wire. That's strange. I thought they would have only been shorting on one, not both of them. That middle one should be separate. Oh, hold on. Strange. I thought that would have only been. I thought that would be like a coaxial cable where the middle one is separate. Hmm. Okay. I'm wrong. Let me check each of the pins on the connector. You can see how much easier it is to check when you've got a working version of something. If I didn't have this, I wouldn't have a clue what to do. So the very fact it's syncing up and then dropping off completely says to me that something's short into ground because it's like taking the power away. Seem to be running out of options already. That all looks healthy under there.
Right, I can't find anything with continuity, so let me just put my meter to ohms and let's see if I can read anything on the ohm setting. So across the diodes and stuff. say loose battery on it didn't it as far as I can see those solder joints all look good okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a visual inspection to see if there's anything missing on one that's not on the other Right, the only thing I can see different is, if you look really closely here, let me zoom in. Right, so have a look here. Can you see here there's like a resistor? Uh, so R26 and R28, yeah? So one's here and one's here. Now these boards are exactly the same and they've got the same item number as well. If you have a look here, you can see 007 at the end and this is also 007. So they're exactly the same board. But if you have a look here, can you see the resistors above above each other? So on the other board, it's between here and here. But this is here and here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a look through the uh, magnifying glass just to see if that makes a difference, because they might be part of the same track. Well, that is weird. I would say that the faulty board is done correctly and the other one is not. Let me zoom right in to show you. Right, have a look on the faulty board here you can see that. So we've got a resistor here and then can you see there's a little trace that goes up to the next one and then it goes across there. But these two were already linked anyway so if you have a look this is the faulty board which looks like it's done correct because look it goes up to there and can you see that point there and that point there is already linked via a trace. So what's the point of having the resistor across it? While here, the resistor is bridging a gap to join up this side here. And on the good board, the resistor is not bridging the gap. Can you see? Because look now, there's nothing to link. What's the point of having these ones here? They don't do anything. Yeah? Do you see what I mean? Because these two are already joined. So now this is not joined to here. Now just because it is different, that's the only difference I can find, I will move it across. But... I mean, look, it, somebody somebody hasn't done that from the factory. You can see there's never been any solder put on that. So I'm 100% sure it's not going to be it, but it's the only difference I've found so far, so I might as well check it out. Let me just see something. Yeah, see, they're, they're already going to there anyway. Let me just put it onto ohms. Twenty four killer ohms. Let's just go on to this one. Hold on now. Remember this is the Oh sorry, what am I on about? I'm getting all mixed up. This is the uh Sorry, 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 I'm getting all mixed up. This board here is the good board, and look, this is how it should be. What am I doing? Thank God I put the sticker on. Luckily I put the bad sticker on. I don't know how I got crossed up there. Right, this could be the problem because look, now there's nothing joining up this side here. Because when I go across this one here on the bad board, it's reading 0.3 off an ohm. So essentially it's a short. So let's put it to continuity. So it's a short, but there's nothing connected over to this side here. Yeah? Do you see what I mean? So what are these doing up here? Not much. But on this board, the good board, I don't know how I got it uh, mixed up there. Can you see, where am I now? Can you see that basically this is now uh, going to there, but this side is also going to here. So what I'm going to do is get the hot air out and I'm going to move that along. How that got moved across, I really don't know. Strange. 
Right, how am I going to do this? Am I going to do it with hot air or should I try, I suppose I'll have to do it with hot air and very small tweezers. Right, looking at the time, I'm going to do this when I come back from the uh, come back from the school run because otherwise I'm going to be rushing and I'll make a mistake. Well, that's good. So I've definitely found something which is different on this board, the faulty board. Wouldn't it be great if it was just that? Can't really see how it would be just that, but I don't know. It's there for a reason, isn't it? And what are these things doing up this side here? They're not really going to be joined to anything unless they're going via that resistor. It's just a strange how something so small can put a fault on the whole thing. That's why I'm unsure whether it is going to be that or not. But it's the only thing I can go on at the moment. Right, so I'll get back to this after the school run. OK, so I'm back from the school run. And now let's move this one, or try to move this one from there to the middle one there. So I'm going to try to angle the heat away from this connector. This is the only thing I'm kind of worried about. So I'm just going to put a little bit of captain tape on. I've got to be careful with the captain tape because sometimes the heat can just go underneath it and it sort of stops the heat from coming out, you know, if you don't do a brilliant job sealing it, which is what I do most of the, you know, which happens to me most of the time. So I'm just going to put that there. And now I'm going to sort of put the heat down this way and try to do this with my right hand. I'll tell you what would be good if you were really good at working with both hands, because then a lot of the time uh, you might want to hold the wand in your right hand to get the right sort of angle. But maybe that's just because I'm filming, so I'm always sort of trying to do it so my hand's not in the camera, which is most of the time. Well, okay, I think I can grab that. I had to bend my tweezers a little bit at the ends. In fact, they still look a little bit dodgy. Hold on. Oh, there you go. It's grabbing nicely now. Right, so I'm going to pop a bit of flux on this. I've been thinking about this resistor when I was uh, on the school run and I don't understand why it's been moved. I don't know because if you know if somebody was heating up something around there you know if they've moved it why didn't they move it back and what else would they have been heating up everything looks okay around here doesn't it I mean everything looks a little bit wobbly let me just go onto the good board see if that looks more professional no I mean that's wobbly up here as well the resistors so I don't really know how how this would have happened. Because obviously it must have been the previous seller or somebody before him. But why did they even mess around with this resistor? It doesn't really make any sense. Right, so I've covered it in flux. So right now, I'm not sure that this is going to fix it. I mean, it kind of suggests that it is this. But I'm thinking, well, what else was done to move this? Why was this moved in the first place? Right, I've got my temperature set to 400 and I'm only going to have it, I think, just 2. So 400 degrees Celsius and airflow 2 out of 8. Uh, should I use my... Let me use my right hand to do the moving. Oh, one second. Let me just get my extractor. That was uh, relatively pain-free, wasn't it, that one? Deary me, that looks... So far this video is like going really well. Something has to go wrong. Right, let me just get my meter now, and I'm just going to check for ohms. Zoom out. Let's see what it's measuring now. 
Right, 25 kilo ohms, it is still warm, I don't know if that makes a difference. Let's try this one here. 25 kilo ohms. So, now it is reading the same. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop this back together. So let's get rid of the good one, let's concentrate on the bad one. And then uh, I'll get my little laptop up and I won't test it until the camera's running again. Actually, before I forget, let's just quickly clean up the right analog stick and also the flux off the resist that I just did. Or the left analog stick, sorry. Okay, mind you, do you know what? We don't even need a laptop for this because I can just see if it turns on or not. Okay, so it's turning on. Now let's hit the sync button. Hey, hey! Hoo, 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 hoo. I'm getting my hopes up. I shouldn't be doing this. I should be checking it first before I get my hopes up. But it didn't do that before, did it? Oh, wow. Do you know what? I'd be so pleased if it is just that. A normal, nice... Fix. Come on now. Be good to me. Right, let me fast forward through this until this is set up. I'm thinking it might just pair up automatically. Actually, last time it paired up automatically and the front boards were changed, so that says to me that the sync thing is actually stored. It must be stored on the back board, maybe. It's not syncing up now, though. Is that because I've hit the... Is that because I hit the pair button, I wonder? Right, okay, let's hit this button and see what it does. Ho oh, ho! Look at that! And this is the good board here, so I'm working on the bad board. How good is that? Oh, the board's not together properly, so I can't test everything. Well, look, it's keeping sync wirelessly, isn't it? So that's great. Let's just try a wired connection, and then I can solder all those rumble motors back on. Well, actually, I can't try a wired connection, because this GPD pocket has only got the one USB port. It's got uh, USB-C, but that's no good for that. Brilliant. I'm so happy with that. Look at that. Absolutely brilliant. So it was that little resistor. How? Why? Nothing was changed around there. Well, it looked it looked like nothing was changed unless somebody did change one of those, I don't know, transistors or whatever they're called around that area. And in doing so, they might have fixed a problem but accidentally moved the resistor across. And then when it still didn't work, they gave up on it. That's weird. Unless it came out of the factory like, well, like that and it was always a faulty one, but then it, would it have got through quality control? It shouldn't do, should it? Well, let's put this back together, solder it all up, and then I can do my test on here to make sure it's all working, and then we'll bring it over to the Xbox. And what should I do? Do you know what? I might sync it up to the Xbox and get my son to play a game of Fortnite, and I can fast forward through it and see what position he comes. That might be a nice way to end the video. Right, okay, let's solder these uh, connections on. Just going to neaten up a little bit because there's horrible big blobs of solder. So let's take all the solder off and then put nice fresh stuff on and I can put on smaller blobs then. Actually, I can just use a solder sucker for this. for some spare screws for this because we're missing two from the bottom of the controller and also two from this circuit board here. Found some again in the box of spares. Okay, they're soldered back on now, just give them a quick clean. So they look nice and neat now with just small little bits of solder rather than huge massive blobs. Box 
to the headphone jack. That's another thing I need to test actually. So I'm going to have to connect that up to the Xbox to test that, aren't I? I also forgot to do the Wi-Fi, the uh, wireless cable. Just going to give it a quick clean before I uh, do all the testing. So I don't know what battery loose meant. Do you know what? That's probably the, the issue on the very original fault that this had before it was all Frankensteined out. Okay, well, apart from the missing sticker, it looks absolutely perfect. Well, this is a slight bit discoloured here compared to this, so I reckon this was off a different controller. But it's uh, all very nice and clean, and there's very little scrapes on it. Very good. Right, let's see if this syncs up automatically. And um, we'll do a little uh, little bit of testing on it. Let's do it this way around so you can see. Right, so look at the thing here. Let's turn this on and see if it picks it up automatically or not. Yeah, there you go, it has done. Excellent. Let's go to start testing. Right, bumper, yes, bumper. Feels normal. Click in. Click in, analog stick, 100, 100, and small amounts. Yep, yeah, and it's all centering properly. Yep, yeah, try the left analog stick. Feels fine. and the triggers feel fine. Well, right, so what I have to do is I have to test the microphone jack and then I need to connect it up to the Xbox. Well, I need to connect it up to the Xbox and then I need to test the microphone jack so I can just sort of say, hey Cortana a few times, see if that works. And then uh, we'll see how it performs on Fortnite and then my son will be so used to playing with the controller that he'll know instantly whether it feels good or not. Well, let's see if it syncs up. So I'm going to hit the pair button down here, turn this on, hit the pair button here. Yes, it has. There you go. Excellent. Right, now let's see if it's working on USB because I haven't actually tried that since the very beginning. So I'll plug that into there. I just felt it vibrate. Let's take the batteries out. And again, it's working. Perfect. Right, so that's wired and wireless. Let's go back to the batteries. So now I'm just going to test out the headset. Okay, the TV's on mute now, so listen here. Hopefully you'll be able to hear something. Right, so if I do bumper buttons, you should be able to hear the whooshing through one ear and then the other ear, depending on which way I'm going. Right, that's uh, working okay, let's just try Cortana. Hey Cortana, what time is it? Right, it says listening up there. Hey Cortana, what time is it? Right, it's not liking that, but that could be to do with my headset. Let's uh, turn on this controller here, and let's see if it makes a difference on the uh, Elite controller. Hey 
Hey Cortana, what time is it? No, so we're still doing the same thing. Hey Cortana, what time is it? It keeps coming up with, sorry I did not hear anything. So it could well be a problem with this headset here, or it might be a problem with Cortana, I haven't used it in a long time. Right, let's turn this controller off, and let's get my son to play a game of Fortnite, and we'll see if this controller definitely is working okay. Right, so here we go, this is Fortnite, where it's basically 100 people start, or in this case it looks like 98, you can see in this top bit here. And it's last man standing, so everybody goes around killing each other until there's nobody else left. And the last one, that last man standing, actually wins the game. So Ben, just bring the controller over just to show that it is actually working. There we go. Right, so I'm going to fast forward through the whole thing, and I'm thinking you should aim for top 10 with at least 3 kills. How does that sound? Yeah. Okay. happens on this game to stop people just for example hiding out in there is there's like a circle and it just moves in and in so it's like a storm that moves in and if you get caught in the storm it ends up killing you so everybody ends up getting pushed together and that's how the game only lasts for so long because eventually the circles like tiny and you've got maybe one two three four five people in that tiny circle Right now there's 34 people left. Got him. All right, so that's the first kill. Okay, so Ben's in trouble now because he's in the storm and also somebody's after him. So he's down on his health and his shield. Ah, oh, there you go. Never mind, what did you get? 20th and 1 kill. So that's not too bad. 20th and 1 kill. So how was the uh, controller? Did this, does it feel like normal? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Excellent. Well, I'm really happy with how that went because, not Fortnite, but the controller itself, because both boards were faulty and the analog stick was a nice easy fix by just changing out the middle bit that the actual thumbstick grips onto. And then the resistor was just amazing on that front board. I really don't know what went on there because there was no components nearby that looked like they were changed out. It didn't look like there was any flux or anything. So I presume it got moved over by using hot air. But what? why was the hot air being used? What was being changed over? And then for all the flux and everything to be cleaned up? So, I don't know, if you know the answer to that, put it down in the comments. Obviously, I don't fully understand. I can't see things on circuit boards that other people that are a lot more experienced can see. But as far as this one's concerned, I really enjoyed it. And I think this is up there with one of my favourite Fix-It videos because everything just went so smooth and nice and it didn't go on for hours and hours. So, really happy with this one. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for the rest of this series. I've still got controller number four, five and six. It'd be interesting to see what's wrong with those ones to see whether or not they all have faults on both the boards. So that would be interesting to see. So that's it. Take care. Bye now.